Okay. Uh, next, testing, just a few little things about testing, because everyone says I had a test. So I just want to make sure that whenever you see somebody, whenever you see claims that I had a test, please make sure you're asking, which test did you have, right? Uh, PCR is the gold standard, right? And that's the antigen test that's looking for live virus, right? When we talk about where we take that from, in general, we're going to be taking that from the back of the nose. That's the most reliable test, right? When you talk about um, viral shedding, remember we talked about that before, about when the virus sheds, 20, 40, 40 hours before, and it can go up for 10 to 14 days easily, right? But remember, we talked about this, right? If you find the virus, it does not necessarily mean you're infectious, right? And so it's not necessarily that you're transmitting the infection. So keep that in mind when you see people. That's why there's so much attention that I'm asking to be putting towards when somebody had their test and what test they had done, right? And when you look at our literature, I know it's a busy slide, but I just want to highlight something, which is this is what happens when you're doing these kind of tests, that you can see some false positive results depending on when you're doing tests. This is another way to look at it. Depends very much on what the patient has, right? Um, also, when you're talking about testing, the other test is blood tests, right? And so we know from the past SARS infection that the antibodies lasted at least two to three years, right? At least two to three years, the antibody lasts, right? So when people say, well, how long does the antibody last? Are you protecting stuff? We know that from past infections that they do tend to uh, hold up for a very long period of time. And there's been studies like this and also studies like this that showed that the antibodies are holding up over time, right? Uh, there's these lateral flow assays. Most people are doing that. What I recommend people do is the ELISA test. That's the blood test you want to look for on the claims, right? Did they have an ELISA blood test? That's the blood test that's the most reliable and specific, right? And, and that allows you to go through an interpretation, which is very much influenced by what's called the pretest probably, post-test probably, a little bit more detail. I just want you to understand. But the other message I really want to give you, really, really important. This is very important again. Um, and, and so if you understand the science, it's very important. So please stay with me on this. This is so important. I, I can't tell you, right? So here's the issue on the blood testing. Everybody's talking about antibodies, 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 okay? There are two ways that our body protects us, right? One way, when you get exposed to virus, the T cells start making other T cells. They make B cells and they make antibodies, but they also make other cells, the effector, the memory cells, the killer G cells. And this is called cellular immunity, which is why you have people that said, I had the infection. You go to test their blood and they don't have antibodies, right? Because not everybody has their immunity through antibodies or they don't have a lot of antibodies, but they still can have immunity from the other mechanisms, which is why you can have patients that had a lot of corona infections. Remember, I talked to you before about the common colds, right? And so you say, well, these people with common colds, maybe they didn't have as much trouble. Okay, the reason is that they have some cellular immunity. By the way, there's been studies done that have looked at patients years and years later. They have cellular immunity from past infections. Now look at this. Look, look, look. Here's here's it's so important on the immunology, right? In the blood, this is a study done where they tested patients and they said when you have very good testing done in the lab in controlled situations, 100% of the patients have antibodies. 100% of them had T cell responses. 100%, right? That goes along with every other viral infection, right? And that's what you expect, okay? Patients who never had exposure. To COVID. Look at this. Look, look, look. Watch this. Watch this. This lab took blood from 2015, 2018, before COVID-19 ever existed, and 50% of them had T cells activity. You're saying, well, how's that possible, right? How is it possible that something didn't even exist? We have immunity. The answer, because there's a lot of overlap because of those common colds, right? So when you're thinking about testing, right, just keep trying to keep this stuff in mind. When somebody gets exposed to the incubation period we've talked about, then the antibodies start going up and they start coming down. Symptoms, symptoms start going up and persist and come on down, right? So that's another way to look at it, right? Another way to look at it. Some people do better with graphs. That's why I have it both ways for you guys, both ways, both ways, right? Where immunity, right? We are talking about usually seven to 10, this shows you what happens with the T cells, the B cells and the antibodies and how they all have that response, right? And so with the testing, I can guarantee a lot of things. Huge number of people have had it, right? Probably around 40, 45%, don't even know it. Um, and the current rate for fatality, this is very important, right? When everybody says there's people, like, yes, people have died. It's not a joke, right? But you have to understand the data. 
if you are under 70 years old, influenza is more likely to kill you than this condition, right? You have to be over age 65 to approach the level of mortality that you see with influenza. In the nursing home populations, yes, it's much worse, right? That's why 40 to 50% of all the deaths in the United States have been in the nursing homes, right? That's our vulnerable group, right? Those are the people you really have to think about, right? And so this gives you an idea of the mortality rates. Look at the mortality rate from heart disease, from cancer, all these other conditions. You are more likely to die from these other conditions than coronavirus. That's just the facts. That's the science, okay? All right, next. That's the rest stop. Antibodies. All right, 